Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and I had the pleasure of sitting down with Dr. Aubrey de Grey at the Longevity Investors Conference in Gestat. This is what he had to say. Sure, I'm Dr. Aubrey de Grey. I'm a biomedical gerontologist, which means I work on developing new therapies that will improve on our ability to bring aging under medical control. I believe that we will, in due course, be able to bring it completely under medical control and I pursue and support a wide range of projects in that area with the help of my generous donors. Thanks, Robbie. So let's talk about the Longevity Investors Conference and why we think this is going to be an uh, important contribution to the longevity industry. First of all, I think that the return to in-person conferences in general is absolutely pivotal to the uh, pursuit of this work. As you know, I've run such conferences many times over the past 20 years, and I've found that they are possibly the single most important thing for building a community, for identifying connections and synergies between people who might not even have met each other before. And I'm very sure that the Longevity Investors Conference will do the same thing. But on top of that, I think this conference specifically is a bit of a milestone Honestly, simply because it's so high-end, you know, held in possibly the most expensive ski resort in Switzerland and in a five-star hotel and obviously charging quite a lot for registration. I think really that tells you how much the investor community has now bought into the potential of the longevity sector. OK, Robbie, let's talk about the new foundation. You've got your board of directors and obviously a very exciting pipeline of activities ahead. Uh, what's going to be coming at us? Sure, yes. Yeah. So the new foundation is going to be a progression from Sense Research Foundation, which I co-founded back in 2009 and was the chief science officer of for a decade or more after that. And uh, that's because the work that Sense Research Foundation are doing is fantastic work. Well, I would say that, wouldn't I, since I put it in place, with fantastic people who I would say that because I heard them. Um, but there are things that are one step beyond. Let's say they're just like more futuristic, more edgier than um, what SRF are doing. And I'm now in a position, especially given the um, predilections of some of the major donors that have come in from the crypto community over the past couple of years to, you know, to go a bit further. So that's really the summary. So let's talk about parabiosis, because obviously this has the potential of a systemic effect on longevity, and this is part of the new foundation's focus. So I'm keen to know, um, do you feel that, obviously on the basis that transfusions happen all around the world, uh, that this is a longevity solution that's nearer to market? Actually, the work that the New Foundation is going to do in that area is a little off the wall relative to the work that uh, we hear about a lot these days on parabiosis itself and also plasma exchange, neutral blood exchange, things like that. Um, I, I have um, great interest in those things, but I think they're already being done well and in a variety of different ways, and that as such probably doesn't need my help all that much. Um, the thing that we're going to be doing as one of our initial projects is actually, I'm calling it parabiosis on steroids, but really um, it's ex vivo parabiosis, which sounds like a contradiction in terms, but the idea is to take a, a single organ and to try to rejuvenate it with perfusate, stuff that we pump through the vasculature, uh, to a greater extent than we can do if the organ is still in the body and you now we have all the complications of the other organs you know, you know, getting in the way of the procedure. So that's basically the, the goal with this project. So this will be something that's a combination of surgery and treatment? Um, well, actually, I'm not sure that that's going to be the main utility. The, um, it may be, though. It may be a big one. Uh, that we can rejuvenate an organ outside the body and then transplant it back into the same body or another body uh, in a better state than it would be if we just tried to do some kind of dialysis or whatever uh, when it was in situ. Um, but there's also value in, uh, fr from a knowledge gathering perspective. It may be the quickest route towards understanding what kind of thing we could do in vivo, in situ, um, uh, just, just there may be a better debug cycle on the experiments this way. Let's talk about the other parts of the foundation. You've got uh, A4LI and the Healthspan Action Coalition. Now, 
I've noticed myself that the rhetoric in the industry has changed over the last number of years. Um, how are you looking to change the vocabulary and uh, work with um, politicians and influencer groups to, to really make things happen? Well, first of all, let me clarify that those are not the only two things we haven't yet covered. Uh, I'm also going to be uh, supporting a uh, very important cryonics project, which is uh, uh, pursuing the um, great reduction, a huge reduction in the amount of damage that cryopreservation does to tissue. And I'm going to be continuing to support the um, Less Death uh, Retreat uh, series, whose first iteration happened just a month or two ago, a retreat designed as an education thing to educate people with an interest in this field and with some knowledge and skills, but perhaps not all the things they need to know, <coughs> and to, to, to connect them with other people so as to form teams that can move forward well. I believe that's going to uh, bear enormous fruit going forward. But the two things you mentioned are certainly extremely important. It's come to the point where the conversation, the public conversation about longevity and life extension has become a lot more, um, well, enlightened than it used to be, but still not nearly enlightened enough. And that's the kind of point where it becomes possible to actually accelerate that, that, that enlightenment process, so to speak. So A4LI is seeking to do this in Congress in the US, um, to actually lobby uh, Congress people and uh, to you know, have a caucus and things like that to um, actually cause legislation or you know, changes in legislation that will facilitate the pursuit of the kinds of therapies that we want to do, not just the research into developing them, but also, of course, disseminating them, you know, approving them regulatorily and so on. And then the Health Plan Action Coalition <coughs> will be all about um, the, the direct-to-consumer sort of thing. In other words, rather in the same way as the AARP, it will try to uh, talk to all of the population, certainly the elderly population, and support them and improve their quality of life and show how they can improve their own quality of life. But very unlike the AARP, it will, it will emphatically um, stress the... Uh, value of the therapies that are coming down the pike and of recognising that ageing is a medical condition that needs to be addressed with medicine that is coming. So the foundation starting with some pretty good fundraising in place. Uh, you've brought in the crypto community. So what is the plan for fundraising going forward? Well, so the situation that we're starting out with is with a very respectable amount of funds, some of which comes from a donation that was made to the Methuselah Foundation in May of last year, uh, but for my exclusive use. Um, that was something that I arranged on account of being a little apprehensive about what was happening at SRF at the time. Um, and secondly, from the um, funds that I have been led to believe may have been uh, extracted from SRF as a result of a lawsuit that was filed um, against SRF by three of the largest donors in the airdrop that gave us $27 million last year. The uh, details of that settlement are not actually something that the um, parties are allowed to divulge, even to me, but let's say that the um, plaintiffs are extremely satisfied with the result, so um, that was definitely a trigger for me to, um, to pull the trigger on this new foundation. Um, now, in general, of course, at SRF, the only reason anyone gave any money was because they believe in me. So I confidently believe that I will have considerably less trouble raising money going forward than SRF will. Um, but uh, both organisations have plenty of funds right now, so we'll just see how that goes. So at the Gestat conference, the uh, Maximum Longevity Prize is now part of the um, pantheon of uh, prizes in the space. What are your thoughts? Well, honestly, I think that it's fantastic that uh, Maximum are getting in on the prize act, so to speak. Of course, the first foundation that I co-founded with Dave Goebel was the Methuselah Foundation back in 2003. <coughs> Excuse me. And initially, our only activity was prizes. That's what we did. 
Um, Dave very much believed in prizes. Uh, in fact, he was already a close friend of um, Bitter Diamandis, who was just in the process of starting the X-Prize Foundation back then. And of course, there's a very long history of prizes succeeding in incentivizing creative solutions to technical problems. Um, we were very happy with how the prize, even though it never got won in any real sense, um, nevertheless very strongly raised the profile of longevity research and uh, got, got, got you know, uh, like um, news outlets interested and so on. So um, definitely that was great. Um, and of course Methuselah has carried on doing other prizes, but I think it's ex extremely splendid that other organisations are getting in on that act. Of course the XPRIZE Foundation has now also designed a uh, an age reversal prize, I oversaw the design of that prize. That hasn't been funded yet, but it may be close to being funded at a very high level. Great. Thanks, Aubrey. Pleasure.